Let's see if I can go around this way. The dangerous thing about grass is there could be a hole. And we don't see it because the grass grows in the hole. both ways. Well, I do have to say that I'm glad that the guy yelled on the bike path instead of just passing me without telling me he was coming. Because that would have been much worse. If someone just, you know, doesn't even say anything and then suddenly they're there passing by at a really high speed. That can be much more jarring than someone screaming, you know, move or whatever they're saying. On your left. And here we are at the big hill. One of a few different big hills. To make sure I'm not going through any spider webs. I'm just gonna go on this side. sand. I felt the wheels sliding around like I was on ice. It felt just like I was on ice. And that loose sand. Going left, right, left, right. And I'm trying to just relax and keep the wheel straight. That's what I'm trying to do when I hit sand and I'm not ready for it. Oh, I jumped. <laughs> that was a new experience right there. Just a little bit of air. Just jumping down that little drop. Okay, I almost crashed right there because I almost hit the, the sidewalk. That lip right there, I almost hit that with the pedal. I have to be more careful. As I become more tired, uh, I will make more mistakes. And that's another thing I have to notice is that when to stop, right? So I want to train, I want to get better. What's this? But I also need to know when to stop so I don't make mis unnecessary mistakes when I get hurt. Because if an injury occurs, that slows down the learning process, right? Let's go up this. Oh, I think I did, did this last time. Uh, same day, different video. So today was definitely a day of doing many new things, and maybe I'll say with that came a crash, but not that. Down a fluffy hillside. And cracked my visor on the helmet. And uh, I'm still not sure if the visor cracked from my helmet going into the mountain. Like when I fell, like kind of face, my face went down into the mountain. 
helmet totally protected me and the visor hit the ground and it snapped. And I don't know if the, the GoPro uh, um, what is it called? The GoPro uh, the, the, the mount that I'm using that the GoPro is attached to, the bars. I don't know if those if the mount contributed to the, the visor cracking as well. Like I don't know if I if the GoPro mounting mechanism pushed into the visor. But it's probably I think it was a combination of that. A combination of direct hit into the ground, the visor hitting the hitting the ground directly, and also being uh, being hit at the same time with the um, the GoPro mounting brackets and so the, the visor cracked in two places but I may see if I can use zip ties to repair that I may just because it's probably going to break again right and It doesn't really make sense to just buy a new one and crack it again, buy a new one and crack that again. But it would be neat to get a visor that didn't crack, like made out of a flexible material. Where it just, you know, it's like those glasses. The glasses that we can buy that uh, have a lifetime warranty and they can't be broken. And you just sit on one and bang them. Kids were looked like they were going pretty fast through here. Well, because there's not a one-way direction on this path, it makes me think that there's probably been some pretty bad crashes because there's some blind corners here on this path. And I'm just going to try to make sure that I'm not a part of that statistic by at least slowing down for the corners, especially for the blind corners. I'm gonna start taking the bumps a little faster now. Just to start learning how to what the wheel does in the air because I know if I lean forward it'll it'll spin the tire when it lands and if I lean backwards it can I don't think we want to do that I don't think we want to lean back when we jump but once the wheel goes in the air but that is something I can discuss with people that have more experience there's a lot of people that like jumping or hopping and making the unicycle hop over the air. Whoa, I almost crashed right there. That's because I was turning and then the wheel jumped in the air while I was turning. And then so when it went in the air, it turned more. It turned like a lot more. And then when I landed, it like swerved 
sharp right and then I counter steered it trying to straighten it and then I went sharp left but I relaxed and I stopped trying to counter steer I stopped trying to correct it and just let it go straight that's what I did and then it straightened out right away but that's just the approach I use I'm not saying that's the best approach but that's how I regained control I, I also feel like I was lucky <laughs> But I think luck is partly practice. Like maybe practice causes better luck, <laughs> at least in my experience. One of the interesting things about going around this, this path is I feel like there's no reason I shouldn't be able to go around this until the battery's drained all the way, right? Because like, for example, I can easily ride this full battery pack. Thank you. So if I'm just like on a bike path, a flat bike path, let's say, without any elevation changes, I can go 55 miles, right? Now, when I'm going on this kind of path where it's continuously bumpy, the terrain is always changing from rocky to slippery to sandy. Just, oh, there's a jump right there, big one. Just so many different changes in the terrain constantly changing but that takes significantly more energy <laughs> and it causes exhaustion this is kind of a blind corner right here there's actually some signs that say uh, bicycles watch your speed and now I really understand what that's why that's being said I think it means that there's people coming through certain areas much too fast. Especially when you can't see who's coming up the hill or around the hill. I guess in a way it makes sense that they can't make this a one-way path because people get on the path at all different points and they want to be able to come back without going all the way around the path. And if they made it a one-way, you'd have to just keep going, which is 12 miles right? but it seems quite dangerous when it's two-way traffic on what I'm going to call a one-lane path because the width of this lane is like a bicycle lane going one direction in many parts right, right here it looks like you could fit two lanes a lot of points of this path narrow down It's interesting how the path will look different as the lighting changes. It can really appear that I'm taking a different path than I just took. Like some of the path back there, I almost didn't recognize. And that's because it got darker. I don't know if I have another another uh, um, going around again after this. I don't know if I could do that as much as I would like to. Like I keep saying, I'd love to run the whole battery out. I just I don't think I'm there yet.
steep hill I first was being shown this path. Uh, the gentleman that was showing me the path said a lot he has seen, he, he rides mountain bikes, and he said he has seen a lot of people on electric unicycles walk their electric unicycle up this hill. And then he filmed me going up the hill and said that I was doing very good for a beginner. <laughs> and just doing good anyway, not even for a beginner, just doing good. And I say beginner because I rode the Inmotion B10F, I think for, I don't know if it was like two or three weeks or four weeks. And then I stopped riding it. And then gave it back because it was being loaned to me. And then, um, I waited uh, about five weeks for my links to come, which was ordered from nextgenmobility.org, if I recall correctly. And you wait, you have to wait for it to get to get here, but you can save some money on it. And um, I was really conflicted, even after the fact of spending the money, I was conflicted about if I should have just spent the extra money to pick one up for like e-wheels and just get it right away, get it within a couple days. Because it felt hard to me to take that break, to take that long break. It felt like a long break, you know, waiting, just not riding when I had been training like five hours a day before. I was training five hours a day at nighttime um, <clears throat> on the InMotion V10F in like parking lots, you know, just going, learning to turn and learning to stop, learning to go backwards. What I didn't practice enough was pendulum, and I still need to do that. Someone was just asking.